Good evening, guys. They said, Tina, how are you doing today? Uh, let's start. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Spring Boot. And uh, before talking about Spring Boot, let's talk a little bit a little bit about the Spring Framework. Okay, Spring Framework is actually a general name. On the Spring Framework, it has lots of our components. Probably you heard about the Spring Core. Okay, you have a Spring Core. Spring Core is kind of like an IOC container, which will initialize all the beans for you. And also it will support for the Spring Expression language. And then you, if you want to develop a web application, then you have web and web MVC, right? Web will be content for the web application context. And it also support for multi-part resolver. And the web MVC, which is uh, MVC, that part like uh, view resolver, those thing, view resolver, controller annotation, those things. Okay. And uh, if you want to using uh, JDBC connections, you have you can using Spring JDBC, the jar. And if you want to using OIM mapping, you can using Spring OIM. You, then you can plug in uh, Hibernate. You can plug in others. And also, it will have another latest one called Spring Data which is built on top of the OIM, okay? And it's not a replacement to the JPA. And suppose you want using LP, you can have the LP, okay? Aspect-oriented programming. If you want to do the login, logout, and to maintain the authentication, authorization using Spring's way, then you can add one more called the Spring Security, okay? And it has all kinds of others, okay? And uh, Spring Boot is what? Spring Boot is not to replace all the components in Spring now, so far, okay? It's actually built on top of the Spring other components. This is Spring Boot is here. And on top of Spring Boot, you will have a Spring Cloud. C O L cloud cloud okay so why Spring Boot is so popular now what kind of problem does Spring Boot solve and make it so popular we have to take a look at the problem without using Spring Boot so what's the problem because Spring the project itself framework itself is very flexible you if you want to using web then you just grab web dependency then you do the configuration then it's gonna be a web application if you want to use spring lp okay you just grab a spring lp into your web then it's gonna become a another project if you want to use spring batch you just grab a spring batch dependency it's gonna become a spring batch project if in your web you want to using OIM, just add more dependency. Then it kind of connect your web application can be connected to the database, right? To do the save or things. So for each component you want to add into your Spring project, you have project. If you want to have a web application, then you have to grab web dependency, right? Suppose we are using Maven. You have to add dependency for your web feature. And with the after dependency, you have to do what? Okay, you have to do the configuration. Configuration in XML file or in the Java config. And now, even for the web, you add a dependency for suppose is web MVC, okay? Now you want to add the validation for the form the user submit, then you have to add another dependency called the hibernate validator dependency. Okay. And now you want to add one more feature for your web application and which is to upload the files. Then you have to add another dependency, which is a commons file upload dependency. And you have to do the 
configuration, you have to do the configuration, you have to do the configuration, and you have to do the configuration to make it a support, right? And now your this Spring project, you want to have a feature for security. Then what you're gonna do? First, add dependency. Then you have to add the configuration, right? And then if you want to have a support for a database, connected database, okay? Again, you have to add dependency, right? Suppose you are using Hibernate as a JPA implementation, then you have to add lots of uh, configurations like a uh, data source, uh, entity manager factory, entity manager, uh, transaction manager. You have to add lots of configurations if you are doing the Spring project from scratch. Every feature you have, you want, you have to add a dependency. And the most of the problem with dependency is you have to find the right version. Okay, when the spring emerging, you they have a lot of versions in the memory repository, and uh, the difficult part is suppose for this project you using web security database, you have to make sure all the dependencies the version you are choosing they don't have conflict. A lot of times, if you are choosing Spring Web four, probably Spring Security you choose three doesn't it work okay so it has lots of problems when you choose the dependencies and another problem you're facing the configurations the configurations a lot of times the configuration is standard probably you are putting your gsp on the slash web info slash gsp but for every project you have to add the internal resource view resolver in every project. And again, for the component scan, right? Component scan based packages, most of projects, they have a standard way, right? But no, you have to config. And also for resolving the static files, like JS files, images, uh, CSS files. And if you want to, um, on a page to link for those CSS files, you have to either using MVC uh, default servlet handler, which is based on the structure, or you using MVC resources to resolve those static content. But for most of the project, it's a standard, okay? But within, without Spring Boot, you have to do the configuration in every project you wrote. This is a tiring and it's kind of like a repetitive task you are doing, right? So then Spring Boot comes, okay? Spring Boot comes to solve those problems for you. And let's talk about the Spring Boot features, okay? <clears throat> First is auto configuration. It achieved based on this annotation called the enable auto configuration. And uh, when you're using the IDE or using the start.spring.io to generate a Spring Boot project, it will automatically add a Spring Boot application annotation on the entry class okay and this spring boot application already include this annotation inside so you don't need to manually add so what does this enable auto configuration do suppose you select a dependency called uh, spring boot starter web when you add this dependency in your palm spring boot will automatically have hibernate validator 
okay and it can automatically resolve messages that properties file for you and other features okay so based on what you choose he will do some automatic configuration for you you don't need to add a validator you don't need to configure for the view resolver you don't need to do the component scan everything spring boot will automatically configure for you this is one feature since it's uh, auto config so it's kind of like opinionated what does opinionated do because most of project most of our developer will config the spring boot spring project in a standard way so spring boot will based on what kind of dependency you choose he will con he will do the auto configuration in a standard way okay but you can always override the default configuration which is uh, Spring Boot will configure your application in a standard way, which is Spring Boot defined, which is like a convention over configuration. Okay. This is sim similar to some people know Angular and React. Angular framework is kind of opinionated opinionated it will already choose the structure or choose the uh, proper dependencies you can just use that but for react you have to select the different components and integrate with Re react right then you make it work uh, last one and this is another very important feature in spring boot called the standalone what does standalone means when we just write a normal Java project, which is uh, using Java Core, or if you learned, if you know Java Swing or Java FX, you just wrap your project as a Java file, then using Java hyphen Java run the Java. You don't need to have a server for that, right? But if we want to create a Java based web application, and then you want to deploy. You have to go through, go through the steps. The first step, wrap your Java based application into a WAR file. Okay? And the second step, you gotta do what? You have to pick a server. Right? And then you will install JDK, right? So it's because of Java, okay? And third step, you have to install the server, in our case, Tomcat, okay? Into this server, right? And then you probably, you have to, when you install the server, you have to do the configuration for your server. And the fourth step is that you deploy your uh, Wi-Fi, on the server, right? On Tomcat. This is the normal way, okay? Sorry. This is the normal way when you want to deploy your application. But in Spring Boot, it's a standalone. The only step is a three step. Yes, first one, install JTK in any operating system you can use in windows you can use in linux linux doesn't matter second one pack your project as a java file java file. third step is what third step is run in the command java java and your app dot job okay. compared this step with this step this is much easier your web application will run as a standalone application you don't need to have a server okay because when you select 
Spring Boot Start Web. This will make your application become a web application, Java-based web application. And inside this dependency, it will have an embedded server. Okay, this is embedded server. Embedded, embedded server. Tomcat jar inside your application. And when you pack your project as a jar file, this Tomcat jar is already inside your jar files. So you can run a web application as a standalone application. It itself is a deployable unit. And if you want to have another server set up for deploy same, same application, you can just pick up another server, install JTK, and then run using Java job, your application job then your application is ready to serve the request. But with the previous way, you have to do all those other st steps, which is not uh, convenient, okay? So in this uh, lecture or in this video, I just uh, talk about what uh, kind of problem, okay, where's my mouse, okay, what kind of problem which a Spring Boot project solve? Because without Spring Boot, when your project get bigger and you using more and more uh, Spring uh, framework modules, you have lots of dependencies and you have to select the right version and you have lots of configurations you have to configure over and over again, which is really not uh, nice, okay? And Spring Boot will do auto configuration he will make sure your project will get ready, okay, uh, as soon as possible. You pick the right dependency, uh, you pick the features you want. Spring Boot will make sure your project will be ready. Then you just need to have less time on configuration and you focus more on your business logic instead of to set up your application, okay. And uh, that's it for this video. And uh, if you have other questions, you can leave a comment. And see you next time. Bye-bye.